Well, welcome everyone, and thank you so much for being here today. I also want to say thank you to the Salt Lake City Housing Authority for hosting us today. This is such a fabulous space here, and um, I was here just a little while ago talking about site selection, and it was the first time I'd been in the building, and it really is spectacular space. Job well done to all of you. Uh, today we have come together to celebrate the completion of Salt Lake City's first housing plan since 2000, a document we are calling Growing SLC, a five-year housing plan. Growing SLC is the result of nearly a year of direct work from our experts in housing and neighborhood development. Growing SLC is also the product of the City Council's housing policy, which they adopted earlier this year and Plan Salt Lake, which sets, a, which sets a citywide vision for Salt Lake City for the next 25 years. This plan acknowledges the crisis we are facing and recommends short and long-term policy and procedure changes to help us find opportunity to creating housing which is safe, secure, and enriches lives in our community. Nearly half of renters in Salt Lake City are considered cost burdened, meaning they are spending more than 30% of their income on housing. Nearly a quarter of renters in Salt Lake City are severely cost burdened, spending 50% or more of their income on housing. And with a historically low 2% vacancy rate, prices continue to rise in neighborhoods in Salt Lake City. We also know that over the last few years, housing prices have increased faster than wages, putting home ownership out of the reach of many. All of this is, of course, before considering the cost burdens of even getting into a new home a down payment, a first and last month's rent, plus security deposits. From those struggling for a path out of homelessness to individuals earning $10 an hour to a new teacher or young professional starting their career and bringing in less than $45,000, to the family working, to the family making it work on less than 60000 to an older resident living with a broken sink, gutters, or cracked walls because they can't afford to fix the home they have spent their life paying for, we are facing this crisis together, and we must find solutions together. During my State of the City speech on Tuesday, I spoke about the moral imperative we have to ensure Salt Lake City is a community where all people, regardless of race, age, economic status, or physical ability, can find a place to call home. This plan acknowledges that some city policies implemented during a time when Salt Lake City was very different than it looks today, and now limiting our ability to make change and worse, promoting economic segregation in our city. These city policies limit the function, size, and type of housing we can build in certain neighborhoods. I recognize that some of the policies are in place to preserve the character of our city, but in some instances, they fail to allow us to be innovative in how we grow. Growing SLC also makes recommendations on long and short-term funding options and how we can use this funding to promote and pre preserve affordable housing. As part of this plan, I have already convened a Blue Ribbon Commission of industry leaders to think creatively and collaboratively on how we can move forward in the funding that we need on the forefront. On some issues, there will undoubtedly be tough conversations and robust debate ahead of us. 
but many ideas have already been put in place, and we have seen how great they are working. These include expanding our transit station area zones, which have promoted mixed use development along our transit corridors. These zones not only allow developers to build affordable housing, they reduce the need for cars, allowing residents to keep even more money in their pockets. We have also had success with new form-based zones scattered around the city. These areas allow us to focus development on form and on function. They allow us to be innovative in how we build and increase density while preserving the character of our neighborhoods. Today is the first step in what I hope is a five-year timetable to implement the ideas of growing Salt Lake City. Our next step will be to work with the City Council and the public to find common ground and to vet out these new ideas. I know the Council shares in my urgency to begin resolving this issue and I am looking forward to these conversations. There is a lot more gro to growing SLC than I have mentioned and I am going to turn time over to Mike Ackerlow from HAND to walk you through some of the specifics. Mike and his team at HAND, many of who are here today, and if you are, would you please stand or raise your hand if you are a member of our HAND team? Come on, come on. I want to acknowledge this team because they have spent countless hours gathering data, getting feedback, and ultimately putting this very comprehensive document together. Kudos to all of you. Thank you very much for your hard work. <laughs> Salt Lake City is lucky to have such thoughtful experts, and that is exactly who you are. You are working on behalf of our community, and that is to be commended. I also want to quickly thank Erin Trinbeth Murray from Utah Community Action, who will share with us her perspective of this plan, and Dan Nackerman from the Salt Lake City Housing Authority to speak a little on how we can all partner together to implement the goals of this plan. So I'm going to turn the time over to Mike Ackerlow. Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming out and participating in this uh, event today. We are so excited to launch the housing plan and start to put um, these solutions into action. Over the past four years, I've had the opportunity to serve as uh, the Director of Housing and Neighborhood Development in Salt Lake City. And I want to give you a little bit of background on this plan so you can see, as you read it, how we got to where we are. <clears throat> Working with dedicated staff, we quickly determined that the city needed to take the lead in the affordable housing discussion, and we needed to be at the table with those who were already making a difference. We got hard to work identifying our housing needs and how to address them. Working together as a team, we studied data and numbers to understand incomes, demographics, dollars and cents. But we went beyond that. We realized that too many people in our great city were being lost due to failures in our systems that should have been there to support them and prevent them from entering poverty, homelessness, or other financial hardships. We talked about and to people, families, seniors, children, millennials, those with disabilities, those with mental or physical illness. Staff members held and participated in workshops with those who are experiencing homelessness. They bundled up on a very early and cold January morning to count those in our homeless population as part of the point in time count. Staff created clothing drives, volunteered in the community, and spent time learning about the lives who are struggling each day. Working together with our wonderful service provider community, we raised awareness to the increasing struggles that people are facing each day that they can't afford to live in this city and still live balanced and healthy lives. 
We, are, we immersed ourselves into our community and tried to understand as best we could what people feel, see, and experience each day. As we did this, our affordable housing crisis became more than numbers. It became very real and very personal to us. We saw in the faces of those who are homeless or cost burdened and struggling to make it through each day um, and, and learned from those people the struggles that they are facing and could see their plea for help. We also learned that too many in our city are cost burdened and don't have the money, enough money to provide food, clothing, transportation, or basic essentials of life. We understand the impacts of housing security on those experiencing it. The stress, the physical and mental illness, the lower graduation rates, higher crime rates, homelessness, and more. Armed with knowledge, data, compassion, and a deeper understanding, we moved forward with the creation of a plan that finds solutions to address the current housing crisis in our city, but also takes measures to ensure that it won't happen again. With that, we are excited to present Growing SLC, a five-year housing plan. This is a plan that is about people. It begins with the vision that Salt Lake City is a place for a growing, diverse population to find housing opportunities that are safe, secure, and, in and enrich lives and communities. To achieve this vision, the plan has three goals. First, reform city practices to promote a responsive, affordable, high opportunity housing market. Second, increase housing opportunities for cost burdened households. And third, build a more equitable city. You will find in the plan that within each one of these goals are specific objection, objectives and solutions that the city, in collaboration with our partners, can work on to, together to effectuate change. This plan focuses on the need for more housing choice for all residents and the urgency of preserving afford affordability where it now and will exist. It provides solutions to address our affordability gap, reducing um, housing <coughs> instability, and providing housing to those who are homeless. The plan identifies ways that the city can be a better partner through removing impediments in city processes to encourage more housing development and looks at how to build a successful planning and zoning ordinance to build on a successful planning and zoning ordinance to create a wider range of housing types for a mix of incomes. I want to highlight just a few of the objectives and solutions that are identified in this plan. You may not believe me when I say that our city needs more housing especially when you see the number of cranes in our skyline. But a greater variety of housing types in all neighborhoods will alleviate some of the pressure that we are experiencing as can be seen in 2% vacancy rates and rental rates at all-time highs. A larger supply provides more housing opportunities for people who want to live in our great city but can't afford it, or for those who do live here but can't find housing that meets their needs. One of our first objectives in this plan is to build upon the great work that has been done by our planning division and to develop flexible zoning tools and regulations that promote a mix of housing products. Single family homes, duplexes, townhomes, small apartment complexes, and high density multifamily structures that are placed in the right location and include good design create opportunities for people to stay in our cities, in our city as their needs change. Building on that, this plan sets an objective to prioritize the development of new affordable housing with an emphasis on households earning $20,000 or less each year. We are talking about those who are living in poverty or who are experiencing homelessness. To achieve this ambitious goal, we can no longer accept the way we have been doing things. We will simply never get ahead and we need action now. Our action items include proposing a significant long-term and sustainable funding source for the development, preservation, and stability of affordable housing. Working with housing partners and governmental entities to create an incentivized re uh, rental assistance program and identifying other incentives to promote the development of deeply affordable housing. We also desire to work with landlords to improve their housing stock and provide incentives for them to rent to low-income households. Finally, this plan expresses our commitment to building an equitable and fair city. We seek, we seek ways to provide affordable housing in every neighborhood so that people of every income can enjoy the same opportunities in this great city. We want to eliminate incidences of housing discrimination 
and enhance awareness and resources for tenants so that they know their rights and also their responsibilities. Through this plan, we want to ensure that anyone can find a place to live, feel, feel secure, and be a participant in all that Salt Lake City has to offer. There is no silver, silver bullet to solving our housing crisis. In growing SLC, you will see that the identified goals build on one another and that the objectives and solutions all work together with the purpose to make significant change. However, the success of this plan won't be because of words on a page, but rather will be a result of collaboration between our partners and a willingness to do new things. And why a five-year plan? Well, we know this is bold and aggressive and it's going to be a lot of work, but we know we can do it. The real answer to this question is simple. We are in a crisis now, and we have to take action now. This plan will allow us to be nimble as market conditions change, but also gives us, gives us clear direction on what we can do for the next five years. We want to know what you think. We want, to, want you to understand and participate in making this plan happen. Today, we are providing an FAQ and an overview of the goals, objectives, and solutions outlined in Growing SLC. Those are available on the table right over here. But there is so much more to know. Please go to our website, www.slcgov.com forward slash hand to read through the plan and send us your thoughts and feedback. This afternoon, the plan will be a topic on Open City Hall, which is a great way to participate in this discussion. In my last 30 seconds, I want to thank the staff of Housing and Neighborhood Development for their work on this plan and the dedication they have to changing lives. And in particular, I want to thank Melissa Jensen, who is our city's new housing director. She's the one and a half person, people standing right behind me. Um, our deputy director, Matt Dahl, and Sean Murphy, who is the city's housing policy manager. In addition, I'd like to thank Mark Morris and Laura Bandara from VOTA, who worked with us as consultants on the plan. I especially want to thank our mayor, who has supported us in the creation of this plan. We have spent many hours with her discussing the complexities of housing and the solutions that will make a difference. We appreciate the trust that she has in us, who live and breathe this every day to create a plan that is doable and that will change housing in Salt Lake City. I will now turn the time over to Erin Trenbeth Murray for a few comments from her. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Erin Trenbeth Murray, and I'm the CEO for Utah Community Action. And at first, I owe the mayor an apology because my contact is blurry. I can't see my notes. But this is an easy thing <laughs> to speak to, and that is because we are thrilled um, to be here today. It is such a pleasure to be a partner with the uh, Mayor Biskupski and the Salt Lake City staff and our nonprofit partners in the community. Um, we're absolutely uh, elated and excited that the city has taken such a leadership position on the five-year plan, and we truly believe with the services that we provide people living in poverty in our community that affordable housing is the key to success. Um, a little bit about Utah Community Action. We served about 60,000 people living in poverty last year through comprehensive and wraparound services. Um, as we all know, homelessness is such a complex issue. However, uh, there are some proven strategies and the strength of this community of partnering with one another and leveraging each other's resources is the solution to solving and ending homelessness and having uh, affordable and stable housing for our, our neighbors. Um, one of the programs that we have been so thrilled to work with, work on this year, was a partnership with the state, with uh, 211, the LDS Church, and the Road Home, and that was to implement a program called Diversion. And the idea of Diversion is to do everything possible with a family uh, to divert them to a safe uh, place with, within their resources to avoid staying in the shelter. And our program was so successful, we diverted 140, 167 families that were assessed this last year that would have ended up staying in the shelter and have maintained not going into the shelter for over a year. So with those uh, services, we have seen some light. We have seen some promises that are in complete alignment um, with the plan and how that 
affordable housing for these families is obtainable, it is reachable, and they just need a little bit of coaching, a little bit of guidance, a little bit of a lift, and they are there, and they are gonna be our neighbors, and we're excited for that. Um, in this coming year, we hope to grow the capacity of this program to serve more families, and now more than ever, our community needs a unified approach to addressing homelessness and uh, the housing, uh, affordable housing issue in our community. I commend so much the mayor for her leadership um, with this issue and her commitment to working with state and county leadership as well. Together we can truly make a difference in the lives of our very most vulnerable families and just you being here today shows such a commitment to that. So proud of my community and thank you for having us. Uh, hello and welcome. I'm Dan Nackerman, uh, the proud executive director of the Salt Lake City Housing Authority and also uh, the proud owner with the Salt Lake City Housing Authority of these two properties on each side of you, which I'm going to talk about a little bit today. Uh, as an example, about 10 yards down that hallway are uh, a previous homeless individual. Uh, this, these two properties, by the way, my kids say BTW now, they don't even text it, they just say it. Uh, they're nestled amongst many single family homes in this neighborhood. These properties faced fierce opposition when the staff uh, built these along with the redevelopment agency and HAND and other leaders. Uh, those, that opposition not only dissolved, but turned into kind of an embracement of these wonderful citizens that live here, many, again, who were homeless before they arrived here, and now pay an average of $510 a month to live here. They finally have a stable place to live. Uh, the families and friends are finally very relieved that they have such a stable place for as long as they need. Things like rent, safety, and finances are previous problems that are now solved while perhaps some of the other problems are li of life are taken on. Uh, housing, as you know, provides kind of a stable base that is needed, and that stable base, in our experience, often becomes a launch pad uh, for many other things, many other problems being solved. There are communities just like this popping up all over Salt Lake City. Uh, partners like Cowboy Partners, who's here in the room. We are building all over this region. So this plan is underway uh, when you think about permanent affordable housing. Leaders such as May Mayor Biskupski and the City Council help us fund these properties. And they guide now the proactive policies with these all important affordable properties in order that they might be built. Uh, we at the Housing Authority have 11,000 households, and that's households, not people, on our waiting list for this valley. That shows you the demand. We house about 9,000 people at this very moment throughout. And those people are generally seniors, children, disabled persons, and families just starting out. I'd like to talk just a little bit about those stereotypes. You know, they pay rent. They pay about one-third of their income towards rent. They often have jobs if they're not seniors. They live responsibly, and they are deservedly welcomed in the community. To my point, there, there is no violence and destruction in these communities. They're welcomed by the neighborhoods. Fear, in my experience, is kind of an overwhelming, powerful emotion, and we understand that. Uh, it's often connected with street level things. It simply doesn't exist here, and it will not exist in other new places where the previously homeless are housed. I worked at, as a housing authority leader at five other agencies, and I'm astonished how progressive, aggressive, and unified the leaders in this region seem to be to me. Uh, the leaders in your city, county, state, religious, and philanthropic community seem gloriously unified to us when it comes to affordable housing. This, my friends, is extremely rare in the United States. Uh, I have followed and we are part of uh, the plans 
and under, understanding that, that there's angst, there's also an emergency happening here. I mean, these leaders are taking on the emergency, and we are proud to be a part of that. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the other interesting thing as an outs, rel oh, by the way, I'm relatively new at this. I'm taking credit for all these buildings. <laughs> uh, I do get some of the blame for stuff, too. Uh, but, you know, they, you hear these cliches also, uh, but, but there's also some stereotypes. You know, there's homeless prevention, there's mental health measures, addiction responses, health care expansion, and of course, permanent affordable housing, just like this where you are. Those are part of, of the whole picture. It's not as simple as people make it. I believe and we believe at the Housing Authority that the plans are truly laudable as they reflect not only the best practices in the U.S., but even some of the best practices in the world these days. Uh, we are clearly positioned to help solve, and I'm kind of shifting to homelessness now, we're clearly positioned to help solve the shameful dilemma of human treatment in urban areas, with your city being one of the, the U.S. leaders in that. Back to the housing plan, uh, we are a major partner in that plan, the plan that you see. Uh, it's real, it's tangible, it's doable, and it's really up and running already. With all the focus on street level housing, y'all need to know, and I'm from Detroit, so that's a, not real, <laughs> that, that beautiful, well-managed properties just like this are part of, of the solution and are being built all over the city. We've worked hand in hand with hand. Let me rephrase that. We have worked hand in hand with the city's housing and neighborhood development department to build these types of properties. We have a new beautiful complex working with hand and, and the RDA on Ninth East that's about to open. You probably have seen that. It's about 90% complete. And we have built and purchased about 20 other properties with these partners. So thank you, hand. Thank you, RDA. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Members. Thank you, Neighbors. And I'll just repeat that. Thank you, Neighbors, for, for really running on all cylinders as we take this, this trip as fast as we can due to the emergency nature of housing. So as a relative newcomer, congratulate you as Salt Lake City. I'd like to congratulate the county who works with us, the great state of Utah, most of all the citizens of these geographies as you are showing the compassion, resource attainment, which is unusual, and leadership that are needed to make these major moves uh, to help sometimes desperate human beings. So thank you for coming to this important event and this important launch of the growing SLC, the five-year plan for homeless or for housing. Thank you. Don't worry, I'm not really going to speak very long. Um, I just want to say how proud I am, and I'm so grateful to be here and be a part of something every day that we wake up and we get to think about how to make a difference in our community. And that is a privilege and an honor, and, we're, and, and this is just the beginning, and that's what we want to reiterate to this room. It's a partnership. We want you to be included, and we want you to be part of making a true and real difference to somebody in our community, and I guarantee that they will be your neighbor. And you may not even know the struggles that are on their plate, but a plan like this, with your help, can really, truly save somebody's life. So with that, I think that we will take questions. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Does anybody have a question? Okay, why don't you just do an easy one? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I listen, but I have no idea what it is you're actually going to do. Okay. Well, I mentioned the three goals in the plan. Uh, first one is to uh, look at providing more housing. That's a foundation to the city. So there are a number of things in there that talk about zoning, ordinance change that need to happen. Can you give me an example of the result of the zoning change that needs to happen? Sure. So one example, we have an RMF zone in our city. And one of the problems that we're having is we see a lot of multifamily. We see a lot of single family. We're not seeing housing in between. 
And our zoning, such as the ARMIC zone, isn't, doesn't encourage more of that medium density housing. So working with our planning department, we're looking at what those impediments are so that uh, we can get more density, so we can get more of those tunnels, more of that middle uh, density housing. You're change zoning. One thing you're going to do is change zoning so you can put apartments in more neighborhoods. A mix of housing types. A mix of housing okay, well, types. That, that, now, in, right. In, in ways people understand, apartments in more neighborhoods. A mix of housing types. We're talking about everything yeah. from single family to high density. So, like I said in my talk, we're looking for the right product and the right location. We're not looking to put a multi-family apartment building next to a single family house. We're looking at how the zoning is already working and providing a mix of density types. Okay, what else? Um, on our second goals, and, and there's more about that in the plan you can read about. Let me give you another a um, uh, couple things on the to provide affordable housing. As I mentioned, we're looking at a long-term and sustainable funding source. We need more funding for uh, for affordable housing. We're looking at a rental uh, uh, incentivized rental assistance program um, that uh, will help those who are in housing become stabilized. Do you have yes. Any idea where you're going? You say you need money. Do you have any mm -hmm. idea where you're going to get? Yeah. So. Um, we have, I have convened the Blue Ribbon Commission, which is comprised of industry leaders in, in the banking industry and in the housing industry. And, and we've had our first meeting. Um, we are doing a follow-up discussion to that tomorrow. And then we will have regularly scheduled meetings and, and some leadership decided. But that commission is really going to be the group that helps us figure out how do we fund these projects in a much more creative and collaborative way to make sure that we bring into the market the housing we need? For example, I mean, okay, first, are you going to have to have a new tax or some kind of new, new government revenues? Uh, we have not discussed any sort of new revenue stream. It's more as partners, how can we work together and are there products that the banking industry could create that would help us get more uh, affordable housing into the market? So it's initial discussions right now. Thank you. Um, and finally, we talk a lot about uh, building a fair city. So one of the uh, goals in this is to provide housing opportunities everywhere. Um, we really look at areas of opportunity, both on the east side, on the west side, let <laughs> me finish. And, and we know that that's also going to require a funding source. The, the, the impact that housing has in higher areas of opportunity is good for families and for children and will really alleviate a lot of the problems we're facing right now. We also look, the uh, uh, HUD has the Affirmatively, Affirmatively Furthering Fair Housing Act that uh, the city um, is preparing. It, it, we have to have our plan in place by 2019. That will help reduce incidences of discrimination. So we'll be working on that as well to make sure that we limit uh, or get rid of the, that discrimination. Means every neighborhood gets a project. Every neighborhood has housing that is affordable. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Do you have a sense of how many deeply affordable units you expect to have uh, in tandem with the new shelters coming online? There's going to be need for, for housing. For sure. So um, for Salt Lake City, all we're part of it that we're really focused on is about 1,000 units over the next several years. Um, the team that I've pulled together with this Blue Ribbon Commission is also talking about countywide, because if you just build here, uh, then everyone will come here for that affordable housing. So we really need to get strategic on a county level as well as a local level, and that becomes a very big discussion that will be happening this year. Does this include, um, does this include a proposal for how to spend the money that the RD has already set aside for housing? There, there is a proposal for that funding in the RDA budget today, so if you look at that budget, you will see how that funding is being allocated. You talked about uh, specific programming for the affordable housing, such as like Housing First or Permanent Support Housing, and partnering with treatment providers in serving people with mental illness or the homeless. This is where the heart is. We're breaking her in. I think
think in the plan specifically, we have chosen to, the approach to make some broad goal that, goals and objectives with the idea that we really want our community partners to help inform the specific programs. So this is really an implementation plan, right? We recognize that we cannot do that alone, which means when we say we're really looking at an incentivized rental-based assistance program, that's going to require that those that are serving folks who need rent assistance get in a room with us and we say what does that look like and how much does it cost and where do we put it and do we have the right buildings and the right landlords and so that's where the call to action is to our community to say come with us on this journey we've laid out what we're committed to but now join us in doing it right can you talk about how this thing compares to what the previous administration the efforts that Sure. So as the mayor mentioned, this is a new plan since 2000. So there has not been a plan. I don't know who was mayor then, but it was a long time ago. Um, since that time, um, probably in the last uh, four or five years, we've really taken a, uh, we wanted to understand the issue better. So the Division of Housing and Neighborhood Development really got in there. We did our gaps analysis. We did our studies. We gathered the income. Uh, and, the, and the demographics and everything we need to know to understand what our gap is. Um, a few of you have mentioned uh, the 5,000 Doors Initiative, and that was something that identified numbers, but it certainly is where it's not where we're headed. We know the number. We know we have to do, but this plan is about action. This is about uh, the people, and this is about putting systems in place so that we can get people into housing and that we don't have this happen again. City Council about to Hold a public hearing for the accessory dwelling units. Is that a part of another way to incentivize? Because a lot of these units will be rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a public hearing project. There's a way to look at the way individual homeowners can become. Yes. ADUs are specifically mentioned in the plan as a tool for affordable housing, and uh, we encourage the council to put that into place in every neighborhood in the city. Um, the RDA has also had a lot of discussion about that as well, and they can, um, I'm sure they're happy to share with you what they've been discussing with the council. Um, in our plan, we talk about providing uh, funding for those as well as um, plans so people can just do it. They don't, there's not extra cost to them. Um, but we really see that as a, val a valuable tool to providing more housing types. Would there be rental assistance as well for people who want to, to rent out their ADUs to the rental assistance program that we're looking at is really for those who are low income or who are need that, that assistance. So if there is an ADU um, and that person has the rental assistance, they could certainly live there. Okay. All right. One last question here. Does the uh, housing plan itself uh, include any initiatives to promote or encourage home ownership? Yes. yes. Absolutely, and we have programs in place right now in the city that does that, and um, other partners in our community, NeighborWorks, um, CDC, all, all these groups already do things like that. But yes, it is um, part of our plan to increase home ownership opportunities. Okay. Well, thank you everyone again for coming and for taking some time. And uh, if you need a copy, we have several copies of this plan with us, but not enough for everyone so but if you need a copy please seek us out and we'll get you a copy thank you again for coming